is it Remy the Cosmaker. Uh, Remy is an open source guru who has worked at Twitter and other places. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the story that we want to tell is one about how chaos metrics are abstract, especially if you have not actually tried to implement them in software. And actually trying to take chaos metrics and make them useful for an organization is also a hard problem. What, what Remy and I collaborated on together was using a set of interns that Remy put together and Remy's vision for how to open and create a new open source project office at Twitter using effectively interns only um, as resources. And the work of my research group, which works with Augur, to, to collaborate very closely together. So students at the University of Missouri and the University of Nebraska Omaha and interns from Remy's that worked with Remy at Twitter collaborated across distance to produce a set of really useful and exciting metrics pictures. And we kind of want to tell the story of how that collaboration went. So when you want to create metrics, I want metrics. Your organization says, I want metrics. Chances are there's somebody down here in the corner photobombing you saying, you don't really know what you mean, do you? And so this is an iterative process, one where we're learning what all these metrics actually mean in one particular organizational context. Oops. And we had kind of an unexpected journey. I didn't want to put pictures of interns or my students up there without permission, so these are penguins. <laughs> um, so we had Augur interns, penguins, Google Summer of Code students, myself, Remy, the chaos community, kind of all jamming together to make this happen. And we had kind of an open source metrics vision for how we were going to do this, where Augur would produce these metrics, and then Twitter would show the metrics on the Augur pages, and everything would work great. And it was kind of like nicely outlined from data to the need to the nice web reports. And I would say we went through two major iterations on this. And the first one sort of looked like, here's what we thought we were going to do, sort of very organized and structured. And here's kind of a little chaotic mess of figuring it out that took place. So keep going. So so part of what we want to describe is this this fact that when you go to do metrics, there's a lot of opportunity to work with students and to bring students together from places like Google Summer of Code, interns at your company, students that are at universities who are partnering with the Chaos Project, and and find ways for them to work together. I don't know if you want to say anything about that. Keep going. Yeah. Okay, so, so the first time we did this, we had this sort of beautiful vision of these elaborate things that would explain succinctly, well, where are the clusters of activity um, on a project and how do we drill in on them? And we kind of ended up with Augur's front end being a little bit like this child's drawing. <laughs> the next time we went through it, this, the second iteration, I think we experienced a clear sort of, okay, Remy had this vision for what he wanted to, to produce. And we had this vision for making sure that the data for fulfilling that vision, which couldn't always be specified, at least was put into some kind of a structured format. So that if we had the data, and it was in a relational database, which sounds old school, but kind of cool, then whatever question Remy had, we could build a, what we call a worker, to go out and collect that data continuously and ensure that it was complete and valid for whatever it was, pull requests, issues, comments, mailing lists, those kinds of things. And then Remy had a really great team of interns who focused on these beautiful visualizations that summarized that data in a, in a meaningful and important way. So we went from kind of disorganized, trying to figure it out, to our group really focused on collecting data and making it available, and Remy's group made it beautiful. Yeah, it's a fair characterization. Okay. Okay. So this is, and I have this actually. I th uh, should I show the page? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think I think showing the page. How does? It feels like it's still in presentation mode. Yeah, look behind you. Oh. 
Oh my god. Oh, so I got split screen now. Um, there you go. <laughs> it's the worst. Uh, Open source. Dot Twitter. Dot com. Slash. Year dash in dash review. I had this up earlier, apparently. So this is the year in review work that was the conclusion of that effort. And if you scroll down, you can see top 10 repos, locations, and then met Remy, de teams, te Remy's team developed a heat metrics. Do you want to explain? Yeah, yeah, sure. So the thank you, Sean, for giving the background on this. Um, this website that you're looking at now was produced by a team of students, and this actually was not my vision, right? Uh, we wanted to put together a multidisciplinary group of people who both had front-end and back-end design skills, as well as some data science and metrics. And we came up with a really simple set of requirements. We said, okay, if we're going to do a year review, what's some low-hanging fruit we can go after? GitHub activity metrics that were being published through Augur, was a really simple way we could do that. And at the Twitter open source program office, we sort of came up with this thesis about you need three things to grow anything. Heat, light, and love. Heat being the activity that's going on in the community, light being visibility for that work, and the love is the culture and the support that goes into making it happen. So we broke down those different GitHub activity metrics and put them in these buckets. And we said, well, if we're going to look at it from that perspective in a year in review, um, we want to be able to show the work that's being put in, the contributions that are being made, and the different ways that we interact with the community. And this website looks gorgeous. It was built all on open source software. The repo is on GitHub. It's open licensed. People can fork it. And it's there for anybody to use. And it is a 12-month sliding look back window. So it doesn't, it doesn't just... When we built the year in review, we knew that, you know, like Sean said, interns were really the, the wheels on the wagon that kept the program moving. So we had to anticipate that we were not going to have active developers to regenerate this year in review every month or every day or every whatever. So we have Travis CI that runs the scripts, that hit Augur, that pulls in the data, that commits it to a repo, that puts it then and regenerates the website on a weekly basis. So you can see over the past months, what has happened. And I'm just going to reload it because Jen Yen did a great job of putting all these animations in here so that it's a little more visually engaging. So the first is the top 10 repos. So this is just a straight up, you know, aggregate and count up all of the top commits. This is the one that we kind of fudged. Uh, this is like a GitHub does a location field. It's just a, it's a free text field. So it's not easy to geocode all those things and figuring it out programmatically. So this is as of maybe July of 2019. We broke it down by across the different parts of the world where all of our top contributors come from. When it comes to heat, uh, commits as well as committers were the metrics that we were thinking of. If you scroll down a little bit farther, you get to the light, and that is the number of watchers and stars. And then love is just the number of forks and pull requests merged. And then as a really simple way of publishing it and letting people know, we tweeted it out. And we embedded the tweet on the website so that people could see it. And this idea of <coughs> making it sliding look back, it's using an upstream data source, that was cool. Uh, but there were some challenges that we had in doing that too. Um, there were instances where we had been scraping because of the work we had done in previous year, as Sean had talked about. Uh, we had been scraping GitHub ourselves. So when we meant, went to make this visualization, we actually found out that there was missing data on the Augur side. So not only were we able to you know, send pull requests and feature requests back and forth in Slack between the GSOC students and the interns in the OSPO, but we were also able to then contribute our own data that we scraped back upstream to Augur and make that upstream database more complete and a little more granular so that other people could use the data too. So this is sort of a, a culmination of three seasons of development, right? Uh, it's, it's sweet to be here. Um, the first time that I got to talk about this work was at here in ChaosCon in this room when we did the bee swarm visualization. And that was a product of an of a undergraduate capstone research project. And then we came back the next year and we built out the metrics reports. And then last year, to top it off, after the third time's the charm, we were able to put together something that was a little more cohesive and a little more presentable. 
So this is the result of the work. Uh, it is available, like we said, on GitHub. Uh, it's as easy as plugging in your Augur URL, and you can generate heat, light, and love metrics the same way. So we only have a little bit of time, so I'll let Sean get back to it. Thanks, Remy. Um, I, I really think it's, I, I think it's that story of students and organizations working together to try to figure their way through this unstructured space that, that is interesting. And I think, I think it's important, like when you go to see that you want to have trends and you want to have them go back farther in time, you've pro if you've been collecting data, there's some things that GitHub or other platforms only give you at a moment in time. And if you collect that, then you can share it into a tool like Augur and use it. And so like metadata about the total forks, total contributors, things like that, <laughs> GitHub doesn't let you get that back in time. They just let you pull it at a point in time. And so by being able to integrate the metrics that you've been gathering, we could show it that, that longer period. And you know, as we go forward trying to get GSOC students this summer and find ways to work with Remy's next round of interns, um, and also function uh, a slide. This is going to go from the beginning, isn't it? No, it's not. Uh, okay. Did it, okay, it came back. So yeah, these are the different metrics. So one of the things we're doing with Augur is we completely, for the second sum summer, um, restructured the way that we collect data. We'd been using um, GH Torrent, and now we Augur goes out and gets all of its own data, and we have a fairly sophisticated set of algorithms where we define workers for just about anything that you might want to collect data for, and then we have a, a housekeeper that tells a broker to go manage getting that data. So the, the continuous updating is important, and all of this is in a relational database and presented through APIs so that if your developers want to build something that isn't necessarily what Remy envisioned, if heat, light, love, and water, earth, wind, fire, <laughs> those kinds of things are, are, are what you want to pull, um, we can do that. And then the next things that we're working on with Augur that we think will be interesting to a lot of people are a push notification to Slack. We've got a Slack bot now that just really lacks a configuration page so you can specify your Augur instance. And we also realized that we don't want to build front ends for all of the possible data. So we've started to build out and share a set of notebooks attached to our data structure so that interns uh, and people can start to explore all of the data that is available on their own. Um, that's it. Cool. So you still have seven minutes for questions. Good. All right. Uh, uh, I'm where you call on people. Sure. Uh, I think Matt is first. Okay. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Sean, do you know your name tags upside down? <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, and then two for Remy. Um, when you were Kind of showing this at Twitter. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that they were looking at metrics-wise before, right? You brought this forward, and mm -hmm. then when this was brought forward, did it help change conversation at all in any way? Sure. So there was some rudimentary work that the my predecessor Chris had built. Uh, we had a a Python script you could run by hand that would populate a spreadsheet somewhere with like one row per repo with some of this data, right? But it was very brittle, it was based on the older APIs, it was something you had to run manually, it was something we knew we wanted to upgrade. So the, when we started the B-Swarm visualization in 2017, uh, that was sort of one of the first ways to, to grok like, the whole history of a, a repo and present it in one quick visualization to give people who were just trying to figure out what's going on with the project a good view into it. From that we were able to say, okay, uh, we need metrics reports and we need them by repo, but we also would like to have them by org. So we built opensource.twitter.com slash metrics, and you can go in and restfully go and say what the GitHub org is, what the repo is, and it'll show you a weekly diff of uh, what's happened as far as plus or minus on each of those GitHub metrics. But that wasn't engaging across the board. It wasn't visually beautiful. We had one student, Himanshu Mishra, who 
built most of the back end and then built some of this front end stuff and we said okay we'll get around to putting a more beautiful front end on it at some point proof of concept is met we've got the metrics we need to give in the stand-ups that people are looking for so different teams uh, had those metrics but they weren't being reported as well so in the summer of 2019 uh, we had an intern, his name is Satwick Singh. Uh, he worked on building out a suite of Slack bots so that we could programmatically generate, uh, just like do weekly updates where we would say, hey, here's your weekly report. And it would just toss that in Slack. And there were predictable URLs that you could go to for the latest so that each team could have their diff on like all of those GitHub metrics. The year in review was really a great way to bring all of that back together and put up something that was going to be automated and it was going to be beautiful. Um, like I said, we had a very strong front-end development team. Uh, Jennifer Z and Jennifer Yen uh, both worked on, you know, building that out with our internal, like, spiritual successor to Bootstrap called Feather and a few other things, too. So, um, I mean, this isn't just about, like, there's a whole story here. And we could not have done it without the support of the Chaos community, Professor Goggins, and the partners we had, especially the GSOC students, too. They did amazing work this summer taking a lot of the raw data that we had in a static form, even though it was better than the spreadsheets we started with, and then made it into an API, and then we made it into a thing that you could pull and regenerate. So, so were your interns just uh, working with you during the summer months in the US, or is it like more year round? Yep, just the summer months. Okay. <laughs> you kind of mentioned it with the teams, but uh, what are the, the concrete target the groups or audiences for these this metrics and what, mm -hmm. what were the use cases? Sure. So I'm an open source guy, right? I believe that these metrics were already public and they're just hard to put together. So all of the data that we used to generate the metrics reports is all saved alongside the web forms that we put it into. So we have those metrics in raw form in the JSON and from the API calls that we're pulling, also from our GitHub scraping. Uh, but we also have can you repeat the question again? What, who, who's the target audience yep. for the metrics so, and the use cases for them? So that's for our external audience. That is us being transparent about the work that we're doing so that we can be accountable to ourselves and others. But inside of the company, really, it was about giving those specific teams metrics on a weekly basis so that they could use them in their stand-ups. Um, there wasn't... This is the beginning, right? This is where the baseline is. Once we have, like, sort of the, the set of what, where we are at, from there, then you start to do sort of derived metrics from it. So if we know how many PRs there are and we have a weekly diff, we can start to calculate better like time to merges and, and time to react. And those are the kind of like SLA based type things that you know project and uh, product managers really enjoy to have so that they can make those goals and target them. Uh, we're at the point now at the OSPO, the Twitter, they're at the point where that information is being delivered on a weekly basis and they can action on it as they want. Um, being more strategic about it is sort of where all of the open source projects are trying to get to, right? This is the easier part. The harder part is how do we move them and, and take the next step. Another couple of rounds of intern help and work with chaos, and I'm sure we would figure it out. One last question. <coughs> well, I will take the time then to say thank you to Professor Goggins. Um, this was, again, it was a three-year endeavor it started with spreadsheets, it turned into metrics reports, and ended up with an API layer with a beautiful regenerated sliding look back, built in CI, automated thing that, you know, we shipped this in July, I haven't touched the repo since then, and it's still up. So these are the kinds of things that when we build on Rails with the upstream partners, we donate and we dedicate that data back to the community and other people can fork and work off of it. I think that this is the kind of way that we want to be building metrics in the future so that across the board so that people can not have to spend their time worrying about building things versus building communities that build metrics to understand things, right? So from a company standpoint, we did not have the resources to do the type of work without Professor Goggins and without the GSOC students and without the undergraduate research fellows that we worked with at University of San Francisco. and. Matt, your students as well. I mean, it was, it was a team effort, it really was, and this is the kind of story that I hope other OSPOs and other organizations can model, where we look at sort of the beginning of the pipeline and we figure out how to include these contributors who are starting to figure this stuff out, along with the engineers, so that they can then build that pipeline to continue the research and get jobs in the future.
Well, thank you for telling this amazing story of collaboration.